So in today's series of 3D anatomy, we are going to look at a specific bone, the frontal bone, as you can see. This is a quite big bone and it covers almost the superior aspect of the sinus and also the orbit. So if you see in broader term, frontal bone is divided into three parts. The big part is the squamous part. Then we have the nasal part over here. And the other thing that we have is the orbital part, which forms the roof of the orbit. Okay. Now looking at the squamous part, whenever we want to have an osteoplastic flap or a pericranial flap, this is our working zone. Quite vascular, I must say. When we are talking about the squamous part, there are certain important structures that we must be aware about. One of the important structures, definitely, that I would like to mention is the supraorbital foramen. This is the supraorbital foramen. And next to that is another super important structure or landmark called as frontal notch, also called as supratrochlear notch. Now these two are the neighboring structures and quite confusing. Supraorbital foramen and supratrochlear notch. Now the reason why it is called as supratrochlear, it is because it is above the trochlea of the superior oblique muscle. Trochlea is nothing but the pulley kind of part of the muscle. So these two form the important structures and both give exit to the branch of the frontal nerve. Okay, now frontal nerve is a branch of ophthalmic nerve that is V1 coming from trigeminal. So when the frontal nerve it divides into supraorbital and supratrochlear, trochlear, sorry and they supply the forehead. So in case when you're planning to do any scalp lesion excision or do a trephine under local anesthesia or even under general anesthesia, it's nice to infiltrate this area, okay? So that the whole area gets anesthetized. Now that we were talking about trephine, depending on the pneumatization of the frontal sinus, if it is a hypoplasia, a we are just talking about, we are not talking about aplasia. So hypoplasia, normal sinus or extremely pneumatized. And if they have sinusitis, we can get an easy access over here. So a couple of things that we need to understand, we can easily palpate the supratrochlear notch and medial to that around a centimeter, we can get an access. It's necessary to have a good fine cut CT scan and if you have an image guidance well and good you can drill straight into the sinus and give a couple of washes so that's about the squamous part okay now looking at the next area or the next part orbital part so if you see this is the orbital part of the frontal sinus sorry frontal bone and which forms the roof of the orbit and the floor of the frontal sinus. Couple of important structures over here. They house a uh, lacrimal gland over here. Okay. As seen in the previous anatomy video, we have two important, very important structures opening for amen. One is for the antirythmoidal artery, which is anterior and the other one is the posterior ethmoidal artery. So while gaining control of the anterior artery or cauterizing it in case of bleeding, what we can do is after getting a nice incision, we have to hug the bone. We have to hug the bone or the frontal bone, the maxilla and the lac lacrimal, this is the lacrimal bone, and then get an access to the anterior artery. Use a ball probe. It's a very beautiful instrument or a sinus seeker which allows us to go under the vessel with it without causing any trauma. 
that was the second part now moving on the third that is the nasal part so this part surgical import surgical importance um in case of taking a lesion also while doing a, a flap that is a glabular flap we can also uh look into septum or in cases of rhinoplasty there can be a nice bony ridge over here it's basically a junction between the nasal bone and the frontal uh, bone i would like to so show you one aspect uh this view very beautiful view i love this view the reason is you get an idea how close we are to the brain the empty pocket over here is the part of ethmoid bone as we are just looking to frontal we are not appreciating this part so in cases of craniofacial resection or endoscopic craniectomy this is the area we like to address from an ent perspective we have two important things that is the supraorbital part and also doing trephine or local flaps which we can do, take it from the forehead or skin lesion it's nice to get in good uh, anesthesia by infiltrate infiltrating this area thank you for listening please like subscribe